Alright, Dave here with another exciting tutorial and today I'm going to talk about AOVs. Uh, what the heck they are, why we want to use them, and kind of give some examples. So, in the render settings, um, once again I'm in Maya, in Arnold, and I just clicked on the render settings. And then there's a tab over here that says AOVs. Okay, and you can see there's a whole list of things that we can choose here. And these are the available. AOVs and then these are the active AOVs which I have nothing here. Okay, now What the heck is all this nonsense? Well, I'm gonna show you kind of why we might want to use them and then You'll kind of have a more of appreciation for this. So if I rendered this image out Okay, and if we look here I'm rendering the image and you can see that yeah, I, I could uh, increase my samples and kind of correct this stuff but Let's say I've, I finished the render and I'm going to just bring it into Photoshop. Okay, now obviously it looks a lot different when I bring it in Photoshop, but I feel like this one was set up with a perfect example. So let's say if my supervisor now says, hey, you know what? Um, I, like, uh, I like the render, but I want to change the color of this, you know, instead of this being brown, I want to change it to a different color. So now we're tasked with, well, can we select this here? Well, oh, maybe not the magic wand. Maybe I'll go to the quick select. And I start doing this stuff, and maybe I can get some of it. But it's going to be, and then I hold down Alt. But it's going to be kind of a mess. That's going to be the trickiest part, is to select what I need to color correct it perfectly. Okay, because if I could select it, then I could use my Photoshop skills to kind of change the color of it. But... Once again, I feel like it could be very difficult to select, okay? Well, let's say if I used my AOVs in Maya strategically, what I can do if I embedded selection areas, you can see here, now we have select by part or select by material, okay? Now, you might be saying, well, Dave, I don't want, want this to look like a clown helmet, but I think that you can kind of see what's going on here. So let's say if I go to select by material, I could go here and I could go to my magic wand tool, which you probably thought you would never use in a million years. And I can just click on that. And once again, if I don't have continu contiguous selected, it's going to select all the green areas, no matter where they are. And nobody's going to see this layer. So I can hide this. Then I can go back to my subject here. And if I needed to duplicate this, I'll just drag it down here. And then on this one, maybe I create a, a mask, so it's just that part. Then I could do something like this and go into my, um, let's see, adjustment. Um, actually, I need to be on this one. Image adjustment, hue saturation. Now I could do something like this, and I could change the color to whatever I want. Okay, and you can see how easy that was. The changing the color is not the hard part selecting it normally is the hard part okay now you can see that um, what do we have embedded here well if I go back to this now I could select all of this part all of oh, I have to be on this one all of this I could select all the red with just one click but if I embedded it to be like this select by part now I can see that I could select whoop, once again I have to be in the layer I can select this part, or I can select that part, or I can select that part. Once again, nobody's going to see this. It's just that if I select this part, then if I hide that, now I can come back here, and I could uh, maybe duplicate, color correct, or do whatever I need to do to just that part. Okay? So these are kind of like embedded selections. Okay? Well, what else can we do? And Maybe what I'll do is I'll just delete <coughs> that. And I'll, I'll get rid of my selection. So that's just kind of showing the selection areas. But if I open this up, I can see that the shine is isolated and the reflection is isolated. So I'm going to hide that. And if I take this off, I can see that this would be considered the base render. This would be considered the lighting. This is the reflection. And this is the shine. Okay, so what the heck is this? So let's say if um, my supervisor came back. Okay, so this is the final pass here. Um, the supervisor came back and said, this is too shiny. Okay, 
Well, if I extracted this, I can go to the shine layer and I could bring down the opacity of the shine and make it less shiny. Okay, if I wanted to make it actually more shiny than it is, I could actually double up this layer of shine. And you can see that it's set to a blending mode of, of linear dodge. Now it's actually shinier than it was before. Okay, I'll just undo that. Same with reflection. Let's say if it's too reflective, I could just go to the reflection layer and I could bring down the reflectivity of it. Okay, so it's not reflective. Or it, I don't want it to be shiny, right? So you can see how I'm isolating elements of the um, properties of it. Now I can select certain areas. Why? Because I embedded selection areas. A selection by part or select by material. Um, and then down here, I'm calling for um, isolating the shine, the reflection, lighting, and stuff like that. So I feel like maybe if you're working on your own, maybe you don't need to do this kind of stuff, but if you're working with a team and you kind of want an insurance policy that in post-production you do not want to re-render. By the way, if you had a video file, kind of everything that I'm showing you here would be relevant for After Effects. So if you had like 500 frames, you could color correct one element um, or you could redo the shine on one element um, and it would you know obviously do it on that image sequence but it's kind of cool how we have once again this insurance policy so how does that relate to AOVs well if I come back here to Maya um, I'm going to go here remember in our render settings we talked about AOVs which are currently I have nothing right now and I'm just going to do the ID and if I'm going to plug that over here and if I hit play in here it's going to look like nothing is going on but you can see that um, beauty is just kind of the final render but if I go here and switch it to ID ah we get this perfect um, it, this isn't a color ID it this is just considered an ID pass that allows me to select different things okay now so that, once again, nobody's going to see this. We can just use this as a magic wand selection op opportunity in post-production. And then I could call for other things. I could call for, like, the reflection. So if I went through here and I could find things like reflection or indirect lighting or shadow or specular, um, that kind of stuff, I feel like the toughest thing is trying to figure out what it is actually called. Um, the other thing to mention too is like on something like this, um, chrome is not necessarily going to be a color. So if you selected albedo, which is color, you might not get any result for the chrome because the, the color of this is really the reflection okay, of whatever environment it's in. So I feel like um, you can call for a lot of uh, your passes here and then send them over here. And what you're always going to get is you're going to get the beauty shot, which is basically everything put together. But then you can isolate independent things that will give you a kind of an insurance policy in post-production that you can kind of tweak here and there. Now, I, and once again, this is just kind of, I'm, I'm kind of talking high-level concepts here because there's other programs like there used to be Mental Ray, which was a render engine, same kind of concept. And then also... Um, there's programs like V-Ray and, and things like that that also have, um, you know, AOVs, sometimes they call render pass. Um, and I feel like, I, to be honest, I'm not necessarily a big fan of these. I have trouble kind of like extracting exactly what I want, but um, at least you understand the concept here. Now, you might be saying, well, how do I render this? Okay, even if it's a still image. Well, the way that you render it, um, is just like anything else I'm gonna to go to rendering and if I go to render I can go to render sequence now you might be saying well wait a minute Dave I'm not rendering a sequence I'm rendering just a single image well render sequence is going to render all of your um, even your single images and now you might be saying well wait a minute if I get five images like let's say you're calling out for the ID the shadow the, the reflection and 
whatever else you have. I'm going to go to common tab, and if I call this bike, okay. Now, if I just called it bike, I, that might not be good enough because if I have five different passes, I need five different names. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do bike underscore, right click, and now I'm going to say insert the render pass. So if the render pass is called ID, the name will be bike underscore ID. If the pass is shadow, it's going to be bike underscore shadow, and so on and so forth. So you're going to get, once again, you're going to get the beauty pass, which is basically the final product, but it's flattened. You can't extract anything. Then you're going to get all the other individual passes, whatever you're asking for, and then it's your job to kind of stack those up, whether it's in Photoshop or After Effects um, or Nuke, whatever is your compositing program. And then you have to switch the blending mode of those, and you have to kind of uh, jimmy rig it, kind of play with the opacity. And the kind of the goal is to get back up to the beauty pass. But the beauty of it is that you, if somebody says, no, change that, you don't have to do any of the re-rendering. You can just grab the opacity of that particular layer and change just that. So once again, if you have any questions, leave it below. If you found this helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.